For this lesson, I'll be discussing the advantages and the disadvantages of using ethanol for fuel. Now let's look at the advantages. One of them is complete combustion. The majority of the time, ethanol will completely combust to produce carbon dioxide and water. Ethanol has a lower ignition temperature than petrol. And an ethanol petrol mixture, such as 10% or 15%, 8%, depending on where you are in the world, it ignites more readily, which means there's less strain on your engine, which means the engine will last longer, and it means there's less fuel consumption, which means it will be slightly cheaper. Ethanol has a greater flammability range, so it will ignite and combust more easily than petrol by itself. Now, let's also look at less exhaust pollution, which of course is going to be good for our environment. So using an ethanol petrol mixture, blend means more complete combustion. It means it will burn more efficiently and completely than petrol just by itself. Okay, remembering that petrol is a hydrocarbon, a fossil fuel. Now, spark plugs don't need to be replaced as often as carbon, as, excuse me, less carbon is deposited. So if you have incomplete combustion, what you will get, which is what you get with petrol, is you will get your equation of your hydrocarbon reacting with oxygen and incomplete combustion will produce carbon solid as graphite, okay? The black solid that you see on the roads quite often and on the footpaths, and this carbon solid ruins spark plugs in cars, okay? So it's better for your car. There's all sorts of advantages of using ethanol as a fuel. Okay, so it produces less toxic emissions. Ethanol petrol blends reduce carbon monoxide emissions by 25 to 30%. And that is fantastic for our environment and for our lungs because carbon monoxide is really quite toxic and will, if taken in too many high doses, will kill you. So that is a good thing for us and for the environment. So less incomplete combustion products such as soot, which is carbon solid, okay? It also reduces ozone depletion because the byproducts of burning petrol are greenhouse gases, which deplete our ozone. So let's look again, advantages of using ethanol. Let's look at the fact that it's actually a renewable resource. So unlike fossil fuels, which will run out, they have a time limit, we only have a certain amount, ethanol is actually renewable. So ethanol derived from plant material, as I said, it's renewable. Raw materials can be grown at a rate fast enough to actually support demand. So that's another fantastic advantage of ethanol. And that has positive implications for sustainable development, as opposed to non-sustainable development, which is what we've been doing with fossil fuels. So ethanol does have quite a few advantages. So let's look at the fact that it's greenhouse neutral, okay? So ethanol derived from plant material is greenhouse neutral. The carbon dioxide emitted is recycled back into the crops through absorption and photosynthesis that make the ethanol in the first place. So if we have a look at this diagram, this is a, a very simplified diagram of what carbon dioxide does. So if you think about carbon, let's start with this part here, it's a leaf. So let's think about crops, corn, maize, other crops which can produce ethanol. So the carbon can then be turned into ethanol for fuel, which can then be used for our cars so that we can drive our cars, which then emits carbon into the atmosphere as carbon dioxide because it mostly burns to complete combustion. So it produces carbon dioxide, which is this diagram at the top, showing you that it's going into the atmosphere again. So it's just showing you that the carbon is being recycled throughout the environment and it's renewable, so we can reuse it. So 
That's a really great advantage of using ethanol as a fuel. So, also a good way of controlling carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and reducing the greenhouse effect because this carbon gets recycled back into the trees through photosynthesis. Then we can use it as petrol, put it in our car, goes to the atmosphere, the cycle keeps going and we can reuse it. So, unfortunately with any fuel, fossil fuels, ethanol, any fuel, there are advantages and there are disadvantages. So let's look at some disadvantages. Um, with using ethanol, if you use more than 15%, you will need engine modifications, okay? So using higher ethanol petrol blends, such as 85% or above, requires engine modification, which can be quite costly because ethanol is corrosive and it also absorbs water and dirt very easily. So it will get into the parts of your engine, such as the carburetor, and that's why the engine will need modification beforehand. So the contaminants need to be filtered out or they will cause damage and corrosion to the engine block. Okay, and you can actually use something called a molecular sieve to do this, but once again, it's quite a bit of work to your car. So that's why in Australia we tend to stick to just 15% and nothing more at this point because they don't actually make cars that will take any more any higher percentage of ethanol. So for higher quantities, most engine parts need modification. For example, the carburetor, the fuel injection system, the catalytic converter, and really most part of what's underneath the bonnet in your car will need changing before you can use more than 15%. So another disadvantage of using ethanol as a fuel is that it has a lower heat of combustion than petrol or petrol blends. So as you can see from this diagram, we have at the top ethanol petrol mixture and at the bottom we have high octane petrol. Okay, we have two cars. If we fill them up with the same volume of the fuel, what you find is, as you can see, the high octane petrol will go further. So it gets more mileage or kilometres, as we say in Australia. So the energy release per gram of ethanol is actually lower than octane. Unfortunately, that's a bit of a disadvantage. But then again, if you think high octane petrol is actually quite expensive and it's a fossil fuel, so you have to weigh up the advantages and the disadvantages of ethanol. Now, a car will run further on a tank of octane than it will on ethanol, okay? Because octane can release more energy. Therefore, the car at the bottom, the green one, will go further. Now, another disadvantage, we need large areas of land to produce the ethanol that we need for fuel. So we need farmland, and this farmland means that we can't be using the farmland for food, we're using it for fuel production. So there's a lot of things that need to be weighed up when thinking about uh, using ethanol as a fuel. We have a scarcity of arable land. Arable means usable for food or good soil and so forth. We have a scarcity of that. We also, especially in Australia, have a problem with water use. And when we use fertilisers, that also takes a lot of energy to not only make the fertilisers, but they can also be very bad for our environment, bad for the soil, and so forth. So there are quite a few considerations when we think about whether or not we should use ethanol as a fuel. And deforestation. So to get this land, it just doesn't come naturally and occur most of the time. We need to cut down forests, which means the changing of environments and sometimes the loss of habitats for various animals. So that's another consideration. So let's look at the fact that there are large energy inputs that are needed to produce the ethanol, okay? So a considerable amount of, a considerable amount of energy is used in fertilizer manufacturer, and this is for the crops that produce our ethanol, okay? And also for the distillation or refining of the ethanol. So as you can see in this picture, this is the basic structure of how we make our ethanol. We get heat, we put the crops in a still with some water, there's a neck, it goes to a condensing tube, and down here we collect our ethanol. That's a very simple distillation diagram as to 
how we would industrially collect our ethanol. Now, this process is only effective if more energy is actually saved than expended by manufacturing and using ethanol. Unfortunately, this is the point where we get a bit stuck because it's not. So if you put more energy in and you're not getting more energy out, it's quite worthless and quite expensive to do the whole process. So another big disadvantage, unfortunately. So another disadvantage, disposal of smelly waste, fermentation liquors, okay? After removal of ethanol is difficult, bad for our environment. As you can see from the picture, horrible, sludgy, smelly stuff that, uh, yes, not many people really want to deal with. So unfortunately, again, disadvantage environmental problems. So let's look at the summary of ethanol used as a fuel. It has advantages, it has disadvantages, just like with any fuel. Advantages, it's produced from a renewable source, the carbon can be recycled, unlike fossil fuels which have a finite lifespan and which will run out. It burns more completely and cleanly than fossil fuels. If you remember, it produces carbon dioxide gas and water, liquid, as opposed to incomplete combustion, which will produce carbon solid as soot, carbon monoxide gas, and also carbon dioxide gas. Okay? It's greenhouse neutral, which means it can be recycled through photosynthesis. And 15% ethanol can be safely added to petrol. So that saves us money and it's cleaner burning for our environment. Unfortunately, our disadvantages. It has a lower heat of combustion than petrol, so you get less mileage for your car. Existing car engines need to be modified if greater than 15% ethanol is used because we simply don't manufacture cars that will take greater than 15% ethanol. Large areas of land are needed, unfortunately. High energy use for its production, okay, so it's expensive and you need a lot of energy to get the amount of ethanol that we can. And also the disposal of the waste is difficult, it's smelly, it's horrible. So even though it's good for the environment on one hand, it's bad for the environment on that hand. So there are advantages and there are disadvantages. So let's look at some questions now. Question six. Which form of energy is converted to heat energy when ethanol burns? So electrical, nuclear, chemical, electromagnetic. These are all forms of different energy. Now, the chemical potential energy, or enthalpy, if you remember, as delta H, Stored in ethanol is converted to heat energy. If you remember when ethanol burns, it's an exothermic reaction, so heat is given off during combustion by bond breaking, okay? So we're looking at chemical potential energy. So our answer there is chemical energy is going to be converted. Now, ethanol is not nuclear, it's not electrical, and it's not electromagnetic. So our answer there is C. Question seven. Which of the following statements about the use of ethanol as a fuel is most correct? Now let's have a look. The answer here is part B. Ethanol is used as a supplement, a supplement in petrol in order to help conserve petrol supplies. Now that is the most correct. And if we look at the others, we can get to this conclusion by process of elimination. So let's look at A. It can replace petrol as a fuel, as it is renewable. Yes, it's renewable. There are no disadvantages to its use. Of course there are. There are always disadvantages to any fuel. So part A we can rule out. Part C, it's an excellent replacement fuel for petrol. Can be produced inexpensively. That's incorrect, because as I discussed, you need a lot of energy to produce ethanol. And part D, ethanol will never be used as a fuel as it, as it is more volatile than petrol. That's incorrect because we actually use it right now. So process of elimination, our answer to that one is part B. 
Question eight. What are some of the pollutants produced when incomplete combustion of petrol in a motor vehicle occurs? Now, there are many, and I've described a few of them over here. Uh, up there, actually, sorry. Up here, so that should help us. Carbon monoxide, CO. Carbon, soot, which is carbon solid, the black stuff that you see on roads. Also, oxides of nitrogen, such as N2O5, NO2, etc. And these oxides of nitrogen are responsible for what we call smog, which is the brown haze that you might get if you've been to certain parts of the world, such as Los Angeles, uh, Bangkok's pretty bad, some parts of China. Um, in Sydney, we're pretty lucky it's not too bad, but that's where you get soot, is from incomplete combustion of petroleum. Okay, so, and also unburnt fuel, so volatile organic, organic compounds, which could be all sorts of alkanes, alkenes, uh, those sorts of things. Question nine, why is the combustion of ethanol considered to be less polluting than the combustion of petrol? Okay, the complete combustion of ethanol produces fewer toxic emissions and no unburnt hydrocarbons are released. So as long as ethanol undergoes complete combustion, which it generally does, it's a lot better than the combustion of petrol. So since hydrocarbons contrib contribute to the formation of smog, less smog means that pollution is reduced. So the use of ethanol, although it has its disadvantages, is a lot better for our environment. Now finally on to question 10. Ethanol has been advocated as a fuel on the grounds that it is neutral with respect to the greenhouse effect. Comment on this statement. Okay, so let's think about our advantages and our disadvantages. The greenhouse effect, which is the warming of the atmosphere, is caused by the burning of fossil fuels which increases the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Ethanol derived from biomass, such as cellulose or wheat crops, corn crops, certain crops, it's greenhouse neutral because its combustion does not contribute directly to the greenhouse effects, okay? Because its contribution is recycled and it's renewable. Also, the carbon dioxide quantity released during combustion is recycled back to the crops that produce ethanol. The carbon is recycled, so there is no net increase in the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Hence, we call it greenhouse neutral, okay? And to finish off this question, external energy inputs along the ethanol production process counters the greenhouse neutral aspects. So unfortunately, it has many advantages, but it also equally has disadvantages. So that sums up my discussion about using ethanol as a fuel and its advantages and disadvantages.